All right, we're gonna do a quick setup on Movi XL from box to fully set up and ready to shoot. And I'm hoping I can do it in about half an hour or less, hopefully less, 15 minutes, I think. So the package we're gonna set up today is a red Epic 18 to 85 lens and kind of a full setup exactly as we would shoot with it at free fly. So this, will have, this is how Movi XL will come to you, the base configuration. And then you'll need to add a camera plate first so one thing to mention on this, I've had to remove the actual safety stop on this because of where this camera package balances. So the one that you get in the mail might be a little bit different. It'll have a safety stop here, which is removable if you need more balance adjustment. So I like to just kick that back on the axis lock to give me better access. And then there's multiple fasteners. And I tend to bias the camera plate all the way to the back because that's where I find we're usually balancing our camera packages. And there's multiple points to bolt this to the Mobi XL. So I just get the first one very slightly tight so you can still align the others. And these are quarter 20 uh, bolts. I'd recommend lock tightening them when you first install them. This is a pretty important interface to have tight and rigid from a performance standpoint. So I'm picking up three of these bolts right now. And there you can see camera plates installed. This is a standard uh, ARRI compatible plate. Um, then we can move on to building the camera. So as I said, red, red 18 to 85. We're gonna need to put the bottom uh, camera rail on there and then the top rail. So bottom camera rail, I've added these uh, 19 millimeter by, I think these ones are 600 millimeter carbon tubes. We always use the longest ones just so you have good reach for lens motors. And then there's two flathead 3 8 screws that mount in a variety of positions here, holes and then slots. I think I'm gonna have to grab two slots so the, so the focus, but the thing I'm looking at is to make sure the focus motor has enough carbon rod to, to mount it. Both of these mounted. And get these nice and tight too. This is super important to make sure that this whole system is as rigid as possible. So we've got the rail. It's a standard ARRI compatible camera plate. And now we need to mount the top rail. So on, on Movi Pro, um, typically we mount straight to the top of the Epic, but because of the size of the diameter of some of the lenses that we're using on XL, we've created this adapter plate, which raises, has the ability to raise the rail up. And this plate works with all different kinds of cameras from red to, you know, some of the, some of the red, some of the Aries, some of the kind of all different cameras. We designed it to be compatible with as many as possible to allow you to get the camera rail up off the camera a little bit. All the camera, the top, the tops of cameras are very slightly different on their mounting pattern. So there's tons of holes here. You just kind of have to play with it so you find out the pattern that lines up with your setup. And then this top rail can be mounted to that adapter plate in a variety of positions. Whatever works well for your setup, you can see these mount points all along there. So now I need to add focus iris and zoom motors, as well as the uh, lens support. And then we've also, this is a part that's brand new, it's a lens rod support. And we found we can get better performance with the gimbal if we tie, just to help explain it a little bit. When this is set up like this, you can see that there could be considerable flex between this mounting point and this. So we've developed this part, which ties in these, these carbon rods into the actual camera plate. So it creates a rigid structure and that whole loop increases performance. Uh, we're using Hedines for this build or Heden, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, but then we've got um, uh, the lens motor cable that interfaces with the standard six pin Molex micro fit that we use. 
So installing the Focus Iris and Zoom motors. I'm just going to get these roughly in the place that they belong. Install the lens rod support before I put on the focus motor. And I slide the focus motor on. Get that guy roughly set. And then the last step is lens rod support. So this guy's job is to help support the end of the lens, which can be somewhat floppy depending on the lens. All right, so this package, I'm actually just going to remove these. I'll leave them in. Um, this package is ready to slide on to the Mobi XL now. So one thing to make sure is you've got the, we've got the access locks engaged, and that makes it much easier to mount the camera to Mobi XL. So you can see just standard dovetail. Slide it right in. Slide it back. I just I have a rough idea of where it's going to balance. So once I get to that point, I'm going to make sure that the lens rod support is slid back far enough to where it's engaged. There we go. I'll tighten that all up once I get closer. I'm going to engage this clamp here. So now camera and body are clamped to the bottom rail. And now we can continue hooking up. So I'll hook up the, continue setting everything up and you can adjust kind of the spin of things to make sure that it's uh, safe. Before we do that, I'm going to engage the top clamp. So the top clamp, similar to Mobi Pro, rotate 90 degrees. That allows it to come down and slide into the camera rail. So slide that down. I hold that down, clamp these. So you get a nice rigid connection there rotate this and you can clamp it. I'm going to leave it open because I know we're going to need to adjust it in a minute. Continue hooking up focus, iris, and zoom. So these just connect into the Mobi XL TSU with a six pin Molex microfit, little locking connector. We've got camera installed, focus iris zoom set up. I'm gonna hook up red RCP cable. This gives us full control of the red. So it needs to go in the control port and then it routes over to the cam port. And so that'll give us complete control over the red remotely. So last thing to set up, uh, wireless. Oh, we need to put power to the Epic. So we've got DTAP to Epic uh, Limo power connection. And there is a Actually, this is one of the nice things about XL. So I'll clamp this just so I know the camera's secure in there. It's clamped, in the, clamped on the bottom, clamped on the top. So now you can, I can do things like this, which give you much easier access to some of these DTAP ports. So the cam port is on the left side of the TSU and that's got a higher output DTAP for camera up to six amps. And then the accessory guy. Okay. Level this guy back up. To the wireless on. So we've got a Paralynx uh, Tomahawk. And I've got one of the, I'll just show how we do it. But we tend to put these right here on the side tube and we use the pop and lock. So pop and lock just goes right around. So pop and lock just clamps onto the tube and then we've got the dovetail. So the Paralink slides in right there. I like this location for wireless on the setup because it's completely enclosed and protected in the case.
So we'll just lock that guy in. And then we just need to run power routes right in. HDMI on. And the camera is wired and ready to go. So at this point, I would typically do a little cleanup on wire. I would use some Velcro straps and kind of tuck them up, make sure that nothing's going to get snagged when we actuate the camera, make sure there's no dangling things that I don't like the way they're routed. Um, but now we can do a quick balance. So I, I've got the top, one thing to keep in mind, keep the top locked, keep the bottom locked, and just get a feel for where balance is. So I can immediately see I'm pretty back heavy. So I'm gonna loosen the top. I've still got my left hand on the cage to just kind of get a, to keep a handle on it. And then I'm just gonna slide forward a little bit. I can see I'm getting closer on balance, getting really close. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna lock that down there. And now let's check uh, tilt vertical balance and see how that is. So point the camera to the sky. You can see it wants to rock forward, so it's a little bottom heavy. So there's four uh, clamps per side that allow you to adjust the tilt vertical balance. And then I kind of grip on the, the motor and the tilt bearing and then you can just kind of push Oh, it's not loose. You can push and slide the whole camera and cage assembly. So you can see we're pretty close there. It wants to stay wherever I leave it. So I'll clamp all eight of those clamps back down. We're looking pretty good. Now we can check roll. So I'm going to undo the roll axis lock. And you can see that I'm off a little bit that way. So to adjust roll, Pop this top clamp that allows the whole camera to slide left and right. Loosen these bottom clamps. There's four of them, just like the tilt or the tilt vertical ones. And then you can slide just by pushing, slide the camera until you're pretty well balanced. And a way to check that is you can go to, if you want to be really picky about it, you can go to multiple orientations and see kind of the the force it wants to return or it doesn't return. Ideally, if you have it perfectly balanced, it should want to stay wherever you leave it. So, And then to balance pan, um, we need to be able to tip the gimbal to see which way it swings. And then we would open these pan clamps here. And depending on which way the gimbal swings, you would either slide it forwards or backwards so that even when the, the pan motor is tilted at an angle, it stays stable. So these actuate on these four clamps. So now we've got a perfectly balanced, I won't say perfectly, we've got a well-balanced camera package. It's all hooked up, it's all wired up. Um, we're good to go, we need to install batteries. One thing I haven't done is I need to tighten up, now that everything's in its kind of final position, I'm gonna tighten up this uh, lens rod support. And I'll explain a little bit how exactly that's helping us. And then make sure that the lens support is secure. So kind of one of the important points that will dictate how well your Movi XL performs is how rigid you can get everything that's in this inner cage. And if you think about it, the camera mounts to the lens via this PL mount, and there's the opportunity for there to be considerable flex or displacement between the camera mounting and the lens. So one of the challenges with gimbals is we need to make this whole structure as rigid as possible. So we've mounted you know, to the plate to the camera here, We've got the, the top plate to the cage here, and then we've tied, in, we've tied in these rods to the lens here, and then we've tied in those rods into the camera plate here. So we've got kind of this structural loop that goes around like this, and it's about as rigid as it can get without making this thing very annoying to work with. So the idea there is any input we have coming from the motor, we want it to transfer immediately and perfectly accurately to the camera. So just keep that in mind when you're doing builds. If you have a super floppy lens, if you have a floppy camera, you gotta, you really have to fix those problems before you go shoot, or you won't get as good a tuning values as you would otherwise, and you'll get suboptimal performance. Um, so at this point, let's install batteries. And batteries are installed down here on the pan axis using these friendly Velcro straps. And these are six cell, 10 amp hour lithium polymer packs. And these batteries with a, with a setup like this, we're getting about 
depending on what you're doing and how hard it's the motors are working, but we're getting about a five hour runtime. So kind of our hope is that people would only need to do one, really one battery swap per day. Just keep it convenient. But it really depends if you're, you know, shooting on a jib and the torque on the, the torque demand from the motors is fairly low or if you're driving 100 miles an hour and the average power draw is fairly high. So now I'm gonna plug in each XT90. I'm gonna disengage, make sure all access locks are disengaged, it looks good. Okay. Now you push a button and hope the smoke doesn't come out. So when you boot up XL, it boots up, it won't immediately activate. The reason for that is we put in a safety feature where the user has to actually go in and click another prompt that says activate motors. Just because the level of torque that the XL motors can generate is potentially dangerous and if first AC or camera assistant or something was working with their fingers in here and someone activated and someone else was on Mobi controller. We just want people to have a secondary check to make sure that it's safe to activate. So now we'll go into the prompt, hit activate motors, activate. And you'll see Movi XL start stabilizing. So you can see each axis is making torque now. Um, and we would be good to shoot with whatever we're gonna do. Movi controller, mimic, uh, wheels, however we're gonna shoot. You would want to do an auto tune at this point, which you could initiate from the Movi controller or from the app, just to make sure that the gimbal is well tuned for your particular camera package. But that's it. Movi XL is now ready to shoot. Uh, you could disarm the motors, move it from your prep or setup station to whatever you're going to shoot on, Techno Crane, Razor, uh, Land Venture, whatever you're using. So it's good to go. Thanks.